insoluble silver iodide salt is used in making foams and photographic plates. This salt is prepared by precipitation using silver nitrate and potassium iodide solutions. What proportions of silver nitrate and potassium iodide solutions should you mix together to prepare the most amount of silver iodide salts in the laboratory? Watch the animation clips A, B and C. Start each clip by clicking on the graphics one at a time. Mix 3 cubic centimeters of 1.0 mole per cubic decimeter silver nitrate solution with 5 cubic centimeters of 1.0 mole per cubic decimeter potassium iodide solution. Mix 5 cubic centimeters of 1.0 mole per cubic decimeter silver nitrate solution with 5 cubic centimeters of 1.0 mole per cubic decimeter potassium iodide solution. Mix 7 cubic centimeters of 1.0 mole per cubic decimeter silver nitrate solution with 5 cubic centimeters of 1.0 mole per cubic decimeter potassium iodide solution. Study the height of the precipitate formed in A, B, and C. Which volume of silver nitrate solution should you use to get the largest amount of silver iodide salt without wasting any of the reactants? 5 cubic centimeters of silver nitrate is the correct volume to use. An insufficient volume of silver nitrate, as in A, will not produce the maximum yield. An excessive volume of 7 cubic centimeters of silver nitrate is wasteful. From this method, we determine the ratio of the two reactants, which is 1 to 1. Can we construct an ionic equation from the determined ratio? The ionic equation for the formation of an insoluble salt can be determined from an experiment using the continuous variation method. What is the continuous variation method? This method involves the reaction between a fixed volume of a soluble salt solution with varying volumes of another soluble salt solution. The varying heights of the insoluble salt produced are measured. The measurements made are to determine the volume of the manipulated salt solution required to completely react with the fixed volume of the salt solution. From the results obtained, the number of moles of the reacting ions in the reaction can be determined. The ionic equation for the reaction can then be constructed based on the mole ratio of the reacting ions. You are going to carry out an experiment to construct the ionic equation through the continuous variation method. How can the ionic equations of the reaction between barium chloride and potassium chromate 6 be constructed through the continuous variation method? The apparatus needed to carry out the experiment is shown. Place seven clean labeled test tubes of the same size in a test tube rack. Add 5.00 cubic centimeters of the potassium chromate 6 solution into each of the seven test tubes using a burette. Using another burette, add the barium chloride solution into each of the test tubes according to the volumes shown in the table. Stopper and shake each test tube well. Allow 30 minutes for the precipitate to settle. 
observe the color of the solution and measure the height of the precipitate in each test tube. Using the table shown, plot a graph of the height of the precipitate against the volume of barium chloride added. Click on the points on the graph provided. Barium chromate 6 formed is a yellow precipitate. The height of the precipitate increases with increasing volumes of barium chloride solution in test tube 1 to test tube 5. But the height of the precipitate remains constant from test tube 5 to test tube 7. 5 cubic centimeters of barium chloride is needed to completely react with 5 cubic centimeters of potassium chromate 6. From the table and graph, Construct an ionic equation for the formation of barium chromate 6 from mixing barium chloride and potassium chromate 6 solutions. The height of the barium chromate 6 increases with increasing number of moles of barium chloride until all the potassium chromate 6 has reacted. In this lesson, we learned to carry out experiments to construct ionic equations for the formation of some insoluble salts using the continuous variation method. The flow chart shows the steps involved in this method. Carry out an experiment to find out the reaction between fixed volumes of a solution of X ions with gradually increasing volumes of a solution of Y ions. Determine the volume of Y ions needed to react completely with X ions. Calculate the number of moles of X ions and the number of moles of Y ions that have reacted using the formula. Number of moles equals mv over 1000. Determine the simplest mole ratio of X ions to Y ions in the reaction. Construct the ionic equation based on a mole ratio determined.